Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. And I hope uh, that you and your family are safe in these uh, very uncertain times and um, that you're enjoying quarantine as much as possible. I'm having the most vivid dreams, quite remarkable. I read an article about how we're all dreaming now. Let me start with macro thoughts. China first quarter GDP minus 6.8% year on year. Estimate was minus 6. That's Bianco Research. Um, and this is what I was talking about previously, that a V-shaped recovery is simply a fantasy at this point in time because of the risk of second round of infections. We might see all-time highs soon with 30% unemployment, seems reasonable, Tommy Thornton. <clears throat> Diller on CNBC at Expedia. We spend $5 billion in advertising every year. We won't spend $1 billion this year. You just write that across everything, there you are. That's from Carl Quin Quintanilla. <clears throat> As I said on the 6th of April, I think we cannot sidestep a Great Depression. Hedge firm Elliott says global stocks could tumble as much as 50% from February high and the route is not over, says does not see a cornucopia or of shining bargains in the stock market, which was very strong overnight in the US. And I'll come to that um, momentarily. <clears throat> As I said on the 24th of February, a rate cut or even fall will produce a dead cat bounce and then a dynamic move to the downside I said then policymakers cannot vaccine the market with rate cuts, though they've tried very hard. Northman trade in a rather witty gif, the consequences of too much liquidity worth watching. Stock market today, that was after the market closed, Dow futures rallied 900 points after report said Gilead, G-I-L-D, drug showing effectiveness against coronavirus. Um, uh, so the market got very bulled up about that. Gilead was up 16%. Cure based off 125 patients, including two deaths, the real fly. And uh, as I've said previously, the virus is not correlated to endogenous market dynamics, but is an exogenous uncertainty that remains unresolved. And uh, the market got bulled up because it, it, it was imagining that uh, that exogenous uncertainty might be solved by Gilead. However, anecdotal reports do not provide statistical power necessary to determine safety, efficacy, profile of remdesivir as treatment for COVID-19. Expect data from phase three study in patients with severe COVID-19 infection to be available at the end of April. Have a look at this. <clears throat> Open table bookings had declined 70% <clears throat> before US restaurants were closed. Swedish movie theatres are open, but revenues are down 90%. Um, so when the government says it will open up the economy, it's the wrong question, says DK Tomp. Open doors and no customers is not an economy. Any level of gradual relaxation of the confinement will unavoidably lead to a corresponding increase in cases, according to an internal draft memo of the European Commission viewed by Bloomberg. And that's why uh, Business Week, and I've said the same thing, the virus uh, uh, not the politicians will determine when economies can safely reopen. 
um, home thoughts. I didn't realize I have to play the background music as well. BBC weather forecast host Owain Wynne Evans posts his work from home video that went viral. He's a drummer and uh, rather fantastic. Have a listen to that. Hiking in the Dolomites, I like this photograph via the Hindu, made me think of the way we live now, which is what I was writing on the 6th of April, when I said I hear the breeze, bird song, nature in its many forms, and the urban background noise, which was once the constant accompaniment to daily life, has entirely retreated. The nights are dark, the stars are bright, and the neighbours long gone. You felt the land taking you back to what was there a hundred years ago, to what had been there always, said V.S. Naipaul in A Bend in the River. And to that point, this is from Parveen Kaswan, while everybody was inside, the mother leopard found an unused house and started raising her three cubs in Tantal village of Rajasmand. The mother is coming in at night and daytime she goes for food, cubs are doing fine, so now department has put staff and cameras to monitor things. I like this, an old stone house in Atakand, a seven hour car drive from Kotwa or Rishikesh, takes travellers to this tiny village in Rudraya Prayag district, the starting point for the trek to the mountain lake Dio Riatal. Looks like a fairy tale. These were the flowers on the way to Saruni camp in the Samburu, and uh, that too is a bit of a fairy tale as well. This is a view of Mount Kenya from the farm today. It's spectacular K underscore mountainous, which is taken from the Embu side of Mount Kenya. California outlines a plan for life after lockdown, says the Financial Times. And that took me back to Lana Del Rey, who's California, which is the California of our collective unconsciousness, a dream song. Last stop, now or never, in his essay 15 takes on California, the critic David L. Ulin writes, of our sense of this place as a final landscape, last territory on the continent, where we face ourselves because there is nowhere to turn. Del Rey can be a deft lyricist, gasping, bruising little lines like I lost myself when I lost you, or ain't it strange that you're not here with me. Ronak Gopaldas, millennials now are facing the second once-in-a-lifetime downturn of their short careers. Watch this. This woman suffers from Alzheimer's. Her daughter is helping her eat. For a brief moment, mum looks into her daughter's eyes, remembers her and tells her she loves her. It's really very beautiful, I thought. That beach setup doesn't look too appealing. Sun starved and locked down. Italians ask if summer can be saved. This is an article in Bloomberg. And uh, the visual is quite interesting, isn't it? And it made me confirm what I'd written on the 22nd of March, that tourism is stopped out in 2020. Um, uh, don't know about you guys, but it was another exciting day at the effing homestead for me, tweeted Stephen King. Um, and another final point, the saliva of COVID-19 patients can harbour half a trillion virus particles per teaspoon and a cough aerosolizes it into a diffuse mist. Um, political reflections confirmed cases 2,157,108 via Johns Hopkins global deaths 144,047, 144, but obviously both 
are undercounted. Uh, President Trump presented a plan. Uh, Ronald Klein said, this isn't a plan, it's barely a PowerPoint. No provision to ramp up testing, no standard on levels of disease before opening. Down is a direction, not a level. No protections for workers or customers. And uh, I haven't looked at it in detail, but certainly it looks as if he's had a change of heart and would prefer the governors to run the risks of opening too early. Trump too, I wrote it when I was writing about him previously, thinks it's another trade and his luck, which took him all the way to the presidency, will hold out. And that's what he describes as his gut instinct. The Economist front page is China winning via Sun Chartist and the you know the virus may be the most dangerous adversary America has ever faced. It's like the US was invaded, tweeted Bellagis. The normal defenses fail, it can't be bombed, bank accounts can't be frozen, unbreakable morale, no supply chain, lives off the land, infinite reinforcements and is fully decentralized. Um, and that's the adversary China, wittingly or unwittingly, has launched on the world. And uh, I similarly said a non-linear and exponential virus represents the greatest risk to a control machine or a superpower. This is how Angela Merkel explained the effect of a higher COVID-19 infection rate on the country's health system. You've got to watch it, it's got English subtitles and that's why when I was writing on the 6th of April I said we all wish we had an Angela Merkel because at least then we might have a fighting chance. Our leaders keep saying don't panic and I want to say look chum you're not Merkel and just a few days ago you were telling me it's all cool, it's just the flu. Others might take you seriously on what basis I know not. But I don't. But I certainly take Angela Merkel seriously in these times. No matter how you crunch the numbers, this pandemic is only just getting started. This is Dr. William Hanage, Professor of the Evolution an epidemiology of infectious disease at Harvard. There's not been a lot of good news lately, but with the discharge of Boris Johnson from hospital on Sunday and statements that the peak strain on the National Health Service would be over at the Easter period, you might be under the impression that the storm is passing and the COVID-19 pandemic will soon be a memory. Some of this data suggests strongly that many infections have passed unnoticed, with the only symptoms being mild things such as loss of the ability to smell and taste, and that as a result more people may be immune than had been thought. Surely this is a sign that communities around the world can breathe a sigh of relief and start getting back to work. Unfortunately, he says it's nothing of the kind. Talk of the peak can be misleading because it's not clear whether you're talking about the Matterhorn or Table Mountain. Both have a summit, but the peak is far more pronounced in one than the other. Worse, there may be a mountain range. In other words, what is happening right now could be just one peak, not the peak. An editorial in the British Medical Journal has reported data from China suggesting that as many as four in five cases of SARS-CoV-2 infection could be asymptomatic. Worrying about the exact rate of asymptomatic infection on the current unknown duration of immunity and a possible second wave is like politely applauding the performance in a jazz club and murmuring nice while the building is demolished around you and the piano player gets decapitated. If the reports from the BMJ editorial are accurate, the actual number would be that multiplied by five 
in which case there would have already been half a million infections in the UK. If this really is the peak and we see as many cases on the way down as the way up, that would total 1 million infections from the initial surge in the UK. Hopefully all of those people would then be immune. That would leave about 65 million people in the UK still without immunity. If that is the case, you need half your population to have been infected to achieve a level of population immunity that would stop the epidemic continuing to grow and overwhelming healthcare systems. You need great, vastly improved testing to identify cases and their contacts, which could be supplemented by clever digital methods to spot who has been at risk. It is simply not possible to thoroughly insulate an economy from the impact of a pandemic of this kind. Where I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I keep hearing sirens. This crisis is not close to over, quite the reverse. The pandemic is only just getting started. It is simply not possible to thoroughly insulate an economy from the impact of a pandemic of this kind. Worth reading, it's in The Guardian. Bill Gates, coronavirus has started behaving a lot like the once-in-a-century pathogen we've been worried about. Um, I've written about the viral moment arriving, COVID-19, the fact that the, it, the viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics and that the virus, not politicians, will determine when economies can safely reopen. The virus is not correlated to endogenous market dynamics, but is an exogenous uncertainty that remains unresolved. Have a listen to this. A hesitant Jamaica announces the US has blocked medical supplies destined for the country. Modern-day piracy continues. It's pretty remarkable. It's a short video. Tests per million. This is important. This is from Slipcatch. Switzerland, 22,993. Portugal, 20,430. Germany, 20,629. Australia, 14,785. USA, 9,845. UK, 5,876. South Africa, 1,526. Only Brazil 296, India 199, and as you get down, you can see who has absolutely no visibility on the problem. Trump signaled in a news conference that he may be ending the detente with China when he used the term Wuhan virus, a label despised by Beijing. I've written and I discussed yesterday the origin of the coronavirus. Um, as I said there, the bats carrying COV ZC45 were originally found in Yunnan or Zizang province, both of which were more than 900 kilometers away from the seafood market. WHCDC hosted animals in laboratories for research purpose, one of which was specialized in pathogens collection and identification. In nearly every country in the world, when the virus reaches 100 people, the number of cases begins to increase by 35% daily. Think Brazil, think India, think all those countries where there's not much testing, Africa as well. As Epsilon Theory said, real world exponential growth looks like nothing, 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 then cluster, 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 then boom. As I said, there is something karmic in this COVID-19. The testing of the entire 4,800 member crew of the aircraft carrier, Theodore Roosevelt, revealed that roughly 60% of the over 600 sailors who tested positive so far have not shown symptoms. It's interesting that the uh, Chinese Navy is saying they haven't got a single incidence of this on any of their ships. Worldwide, the number of daily new cases is back above 80, 85,000, that's Remy. Uh, currency markets, let's have a quick look. Euro dollar, 108.52. Dollar index, 99.918. Japanese yen, 
107.67. Swiss franc 0.9692. The pound 124.92. The Australian dollar 0.6357. India rupee 76.5365. South Korean one 12.1777. Brazilian real 523.42, Egyptian pound 15.74, South African rand 18.74. Um, I wrote about Netflix on the 23rd of September last year in an article called Streaming Dreams, Non-Linearity in Netflix, in which I said I'm putting out a conviction buy on Netflix at Friday's closing price. It was then at $270.75. It's now at a new record. Goldman Sachs marked their private equity book down by 3%, said Epsilon Theory. Whenever someone starts talking about suspending mark-to-market requirements, in public markets, I think it's helpful to remember, he says, bullshit like this. Commodity markets gold giant Newmont Corp says the metal could top $2,000 on stimulus. And you know I agree precisely with that number. Um, Tom Palmer, you could certainly see scenarios that have it pushing north of $2,000. It had a very volatile last 24 hours dropped spectacularly back through 1700 and now has regained that level. Today the streets of Venezuela are covered with cash. This is what happens when hyperinflation destroys the value of money. It becomes worthless. Have a watch. Um, and as I said on the 24th of February, I remain very bullish. I think gold will turn viral and I'm looking for $2,000 plus. Trump's attempt to prop up oil prices was front page news a few days ago, so I'm surprised at how little attention is being given to the fact that it has been a complete bust, tweeted Paul Krugman. As I said on the 22nd of March, we're moving from a world of hyper-connectedness to a world of quarantine. And that a complete quarantine is the only way to vaccine this 21st century world of ours. And I was saying then the price of crude oil is perfectly correlated to that COVID-19 sudden stop. I also said a return to a hyper-connected 100 million barrels per day world is not going to happen for the foreseeable future. I concluded on the 6th of April by saying what I do know is this. Regime implosion is coming to the oil producers and Trump can gain the price a little more, sure, but it's a pointless exercise. Demand is cratered and a return to a hyperconnected 100 million barrels per day world is not going to happen for the foreseeable future. I also said Putin will survive because he prepared for this moment. Others are as good as terminated. Turkey's lira may be about to challenge South Africa's rand as the worst performing emerging market currency. State Bank of Pakistan cut its key target rate by 200 basis points to 9% in an unscheduled meeting, according to a statement from the central bank. That's the lowest since November 2018. Um, Pakistan's coronavirus infections increased by 414 on Thursday to about 6,900. Also reported 128 deaths from the disease, but they too are barely testing. And that's why we're looking into the rearview mirror, Pakistan, India, classic examples. This correlation will soon be the other way around and poor countries will have the highest rate of cases, Max C. Rosa. Africa. Coronavirus cases in Africa could shoot up from the thousands now to 10 million within three to six months, according to very provisional modeling via WHO. Um, this is still to be fine-tuned. It's difficult to make a long-term estimation because the context changes too much and also public health measures, when they are fully implemented, they can actually have an impact. The world's poorest continent has seen more than 17,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 
and about 900 deaths so far, relatively little compared to some other regions. We are concerned that the virus continues to spread geographically within countries, said Machidiso Moetti, who is the director for WHO Africa. The numbers continue to increase every day. And I think that projection is probably correct. Africa to roll out more than 1 million coronavirus tests. More than 1 million coronavirus tests will be rolled out starting next week in Africa to address the big gap in, ass in assessing the true number of cases on the continent. The head of the African Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said Thursday. Maybe 15 million tests will be required in Africa over the next three months, John Kengasong said. Number of virus cases across the continent was above 17,000 on Friday. Health officials have said testing shortage means more are out there. Um, so that's a good sign, uh, but we are between a rock and a hard place, I'm afraid. Um, as I said on the 2nd of March, uh, we know that the coronavirus is exponential, non-linear and multiplicative. And we know what exponential disease propagation looks like in the real world. Nothing, 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 then cluster, 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 then boom. And I also said we're looking in the rear view mirror. In nearly every country in the world, when the virus reaches 100 people, the number of cases begins to increase by 35% daily. That's why when I see increases of 4 or 5%, I know they're just not capturing all the data. Tanzania's President John Pombe Magafuli announces three days of prayers for the nation from the 17th to the 19th to seek divine intervention to enable the country to overcome COVID-19. IMF is talking of an unprecedented threat to development in Africa, COVID-19. They project growth in sub-Saharan Africa at minus 1.6%, the lowest level on record. The policy priority is to ramp up health capacity and spending to save lives and contain the virus outbreak. They call it people first. They're absolutely right. The immediate priority is for countries to do whatever it takes to ramp up public health expenditures to contain the virus outbreak, regardless of fiscal space and debt positions. Sharp decline in commodity prices, especially oil, is set to compound these effects, exacerbating challenges in some of the region's largest resource-intensive economies, notably Angola and Nigeria. Pandemic is reaching the shores of the continent when budgetary space to absorb the effects of the shocks is limited in most countries, thus complicating the appropriate policy response balance sheets, as I've said, are maxed out. For countries facing sudden reserve reversals of external financing and a resulting imminent crisis, temporary capital flow management measures could be considered as part of a wider policy package, that's exchange controls. Among the sub-Saharan African region's key trading partners, euro areas expected to contract minus 7.5%. ,5 Growth in China to slow considerably, they're saying 1.2%. Financial markets in sub-Saharan Africa have also come under pressure. Sovereign spreads in the region have increased by about 700 basis points since February, reaching all-time highs with the largest rise seen in oil exporters. Many African countries are now shut off from the eurobond market. Same time, high growth in non-resource intensive countries has often been supported by public sector investment and accompanied by elevated debt and external vulnerabilities, and those vulnerabilities are now at the maximum. Nigeria is expected to contract 3.4%. South Africa expected to contract 5.8%. Within this group, tourism-dependent countries, Cabo Verde, Comoros, the Gambia, Mauritius, Sao Tomo, Principe, Seychelles are expected to experience a severe downturn, with real GDP contracting by 5.1% in 2020. Current baseline projections suggest that on simple average, debt levels will rise temporarily from 58% in 2019 to 64% in 2020. 
So sovereign spreads in the region have increased by about 700 basis points. You can see that in this figure, um, uh, uh, 1.2. Large capital outflows have also been recorded from the region's frontier and emerging markets. That's figure 1.3. Figure 1.15, Sub-Saharan Africa, Eurobond issuances. As I said on the 22nd of March, Sub-Saharan African countries, with no exception I can think of, have gorged on borrowing and balance sheets are maxed out. Africa's sovereign issuance in the Eurobond markets totaled $53 billion in 2018 and 2019. Total outstanding debt topped $100 billion last year. Here you see the exchange rates. We've had some major sell-offs. Um, outperformers have been the Botswana Pula, the Kenya Shilling, the Rwanda Franc, I do believe, Egyptian Pound. Um, I was writing about the currencies being in free fall on the 22nd of March. Tourism-dependent countries, Cabo Verde, Comoros, Gambia, Mauritius, Sao Tauma, Principe, Seychelles are expected to experience a severe downturn with real GDP contracting by 5.1% in 2020. As I said, tourism has stopped out because of we're all in quarantine. IMF's GDP projections for Sub-Saharan Africa in 2020, this is by Paul Wallace, I think it's too optimistic. North to south, east to west, it will all print negative full year 2020. Debt, virus and locusts create a perfect storm for Africa was an article I wrote in the Africa Report. And here you see locust swarm flying high above the farm like a migration of celestial creatures in a halo around the noonday sun. That's the horse cure who has a farm in northern Kenya. Balance sheets, as I said, are maxed out. Fitch ratings has downgraded Zambia to double C from triple C. Um, faces external debt service payments, including principal and interest, totaling $1.5 billion in 2020. This is approximately 115% of official gross international reserves at the end of January. I've written about Zambia. I said they are the canary in the coal mine in October last year. December, I was saying they're still popping quaaludes in Lusaka. Zambia should be one of the first countries to reach out for emergency funding in this crisis, not the last. IMF forecast Zambia's public debt already more than double the sub-Saharan African average. South African all shares down 15.48%, Rand 18.73, my targets 20, Egyptian pound 15.7486. EGX30 down 27.27% year-to-date. Moody says Nigeria, very low institutions and governance strength is likely to constrain the effectiveness of government measures to buffer the impact of the economic and financial shock. Um, Nigerian all shares down 15.97%. Ghana Stock Exchange down 6.36%. Here in Kenya, the Nairobi All Shares down 19.09%. NSE 20 is down 25.83%. That uh, uh, food pack that the previous governor had sent out with Hennessy inside it went seriously viral. Um, and Hennessy themselves had to rebut the idea that alcohol was a defense against the virus as did WHO as well. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your weekend.